it's up to me, I can show you my world We can go through it all You, you just leave it up to me Take a trip to the stars, I can show you it all It's my pleasure, my honor, my privilege to be here today To welcome you to this Puri Kassar experience The Duomo experience I'm sure you're going to have three days of very intensive training and learning In the very good hands of Dr. Kassar and his associates So what you need to decide is what are you trading? This is going to coincide with how much time you've got to trade, what type of trade you want to be and everything. And I can't answer this for you, this has to be something that you decide for yourself. Some of you are going to struggle under pressure, that you're going to feel nervous, you're going to get in a fluster when things are happening quickly and you need to make a decision. Whereas some of you will get bored waiting and you need to do something that's going to be more active. And all of this ties in with how you approach the markets and what time frames you use, that kind of thing. So that's the problem with a lot of the different ways that people can trade. And that doesn't mean that you can't be profitable from that way or like there won't be opportunities because we miss a hell of a lot of opportunities from the way we trade. The way I see it is if, you get, if you're trading a session you get one trade or maybe two trades, that's amazing. If they're consistent and you can tell that they're going to be at this success rate, you can then predict what your performance is going to be over weeks or months and stuff, but you need to have something that's consistent. Um, so this gives us consistent data. It's up to me, take a trip to the stars, I can show you it all yeah, yeah. It's going well so far, so the morning session we've just been basically like setting the groundwork Getting the foundations in place, and get everyone up to the same level Because then over the course of this afternoon and the next two days We start to really get onto the practical stuff I really get to add value that you can't have in like videos and stuff like that Where I can actually go on the charts and adjust things for people And show them the little tricks to get that extra edge in the market So for now things are going well, we're getting the foundations in place <laughs> but um, basically I would favour what's more reasonable yeah. chart. The same way when we do our moving averages we use an exponential moving average because it favours the more recent data to the old data. Like, yeah, it puts it ahead. Yeah, so yeah. everything we do needs to be with that same mindset of being exponential that what's more recent is more important than going to plan it like, oh that's so close to my level, you have to be thinking why is it so close to my level, I'm not touching it and maybe make the adjustments to make it work. Um, so basically during a trading session my job, most of the time, is adjusting lines that are already there. So when it comes to our technical analysis on Sundays, I sometimes think that they must be so boring to watch because you've got five candles that have happened since the previous one and I'm usually not doing much because you can't always add levels but it's just about the slight adjustments to make sure that the kissing points happen. two bonds and entities, which is the, the sort of standard one, you already have the first one frontier. You basically want to add assets that move you along the efficient frontier, that don't move you too much into too risky for reward you get, and don't move you too much into the less rewards or the amount of risk, but like you want to be on that frontier. is if you had a perfect reverse point of the chart, you drew, you drew the swing high-low there, if you went back or forwards on the chart from that point, you may have started to see some interactions. I think like this is going perfectly. You get a nice interaction there, and then you go a little bit further along, and suddenly it stops happening. The interactions are a little bit higher up or something. And this is exactly why uh, they have a shelf life for us. Because once they've been interacted with before, when the structure's changed in the market, they're no longer relevant. This links closely with other things we're going to be doing, such as um, the Davos boxes and Fibonacci movements in the market. 
because behind the structure in the market is a constant Fibonacci movement going on. It's ranges upon ranges, ranges within ranges, but it's always Fibonacci retracements and extensions that sort of behind the movements in the market. Now, the baseline trend line is the outline of the market. So, it should be the case that in most situations, there's nothing that's going on beyond that point. You know, that's the boundary, that's as far as the price can go in a trending market or even in a horizontal market. If we look to what we had before, imagining what was on the chart range, we had the reverse zone along here, so you have the baseline trend line going along there in a similar way to what you've got the reversal zone and know the price isn't be moving outside the area, it's the outline. It's like when a kid's drawing a tree and they do this big fluffy thing on a, on a stick and it's like a cloud, there's no detail in there but it's the outline of the tree. There's no branch and stuff sticking out of that, potentially if they're like an expert artist of kids. But if you want to start adding the detail, you can see what's going on in between. So the macro trend line or the baseline trend line is that outline and the details of what's happening inside that outline is how we use the micro trend lines. been a long day we've covered all the foundations the base layer now tomorrow and Wednesday we're gonna get into more complicated stuff things get more intense people get to concentrate a lot